at a fountain or water. So um, the next two pieces, it's a set. Um, the first is a piece by Bach. It's from a sonata called, a, a, a cantata actually, called God's Time is Best. It's a very a short, I think very calming piece. And then the second is a toccata by Lullier. And it was originally written for the keyboard and transcribed by Marcel Grangeny for the harp. And it's, the toccata means a touch piece. So it's always very kind of quick and um, um, it's very typical of that style of music. And it was written in the early 1700s. So first the Bach and then the Lillier Toccata. Thank you. 
This piece is Rhapsody on a Hebrew Love Song, and it's based on Dodi Lee, Become My Beloved. And, um, you know, usually I've only played this at weddings, but I, there's, this is a lovely kind of, um, this Rhapsody on the piece, and I feel like right now we're all kind of, I think of the, the words of this, and it's almost like that sense of coming into a quiet place and just kind of being being with, with God, but in a quiet place, even though I know this is more in terms of a wedding. <laughs> So we're going to move on to some Irish pieces. Um, this is kind of what the Irish harps look like. They, um, the concert grand harps are kind of a little bit more standard in size, but um, 
the Celtic harps are, they vary in, in size and the amount of strings. So these pieces, um, Last Rose of Summer and Star of the County Down, would have been written for a smaller harp. Um, the difference is that um, you would only be able to play a certain amount of keys on those smaller harps. Um, you know, although this, there are less strings, there was not a way to alter the pitches. And on the concert grand harp, there are actually seven pedals on the bottom, and that allows the harpist to play in all the different keys. So as I move pedals, I can move and make each string a different pitch. I can make C flat, C natural, C sharp on one string, and then the same which you can repeat to the other strings. Um, and you may have noticed that the strings are different colors, so the C's are red, the F's are black, and then you just kind of fill in in between. So C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And whenever I want to, uh, an accidental sharp or a flat, I have to change my pedals on my feet. Those smaller harps would not have had that, so you were, you were kind of limited. You had to play diatonically, almost like you only had to choose the white notes on the piano. Uh, so this is going to be Last Rose of Summer and Star of the County Down.
So I'd like to play the love theme from Scheherazade uh, by Rimsky Korsakov. Um, many of you may know the orchestral version. It's a, it's a long work, maybe I think four movements, and has a lovely violin solo and some lovely heart parts in it too. Um, if you don't know the story of Scheherazade, it's kind of a middle um, Eastern tale of a thousand and one nights. And um, there was a sultan and he would take a, a new wife every night and then behead her in the morning. So um, Shahrazad decided that she would tell him a, 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 a story at night, but she would never finish the tale. So that he would have to wait until the next night to hear the end of the story. So she did this and it lasted a thousand nights. And finally he fell in love with her and didn't behead her. So anyway, um, here is, um, these are excerpts from um, Shahrazad. Well, that was major, it's supposed to be minor. So if you have the wrong pedal, it makes all the E's instead of flat, they're natural. So now I'm going to make them all flat and we're going to start this again. <laughs>
So the harp developed over um, many centuries. They, they've, um, they think it developed about 3000 BC from an archer's bow. So maybe there was one string on the bow and then people thought of adding more and more strings. This harp has 46 strings and they're made out of steel at the bottom and gut, and sheep gut in the middle and nylon at the top. Um, this harp was made in 1956 in, at the Line and Healy factory in Chicago. And, but you'll find harps all over the world. Obviously, Ireland, it's the national instrument. Uh, David played for Saul. And um, you'll find harps in Egypt and um, Africa, China, and South American countries as well. This next piece was written by an English composer, David Watkins. Um, it's called Fire Dance, but it's supposed to sound like a Paraguayan harp, which would be played um, with kind of long nails, like ba -ba 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 -ba, that kind of quick motion. So it's supposed to be very rhythmic, and I'm going to use my nails playing. It gets a little loud, so I'm hoping that the sound works okay through the, the iPad. We'll see. So Fire Dance by David Watkins. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I'm going to play a few jazz standards and, and then see if anybody has any questions about anything. So these three pieces are Embraceable You, um, Night and Day, actually I'm going to start with Night and Day by Cole Porter, then Embraceable You, Gershwin, and Lullaby of, uh, Lullaby of Birdland by Sheeran. That last piece is a little rough on the tuning. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm going to come on the other side. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Captain. So, so much, you know, I don't know when uh, uh, yes. on that section. So, <laughs> Hello. It was lovely. Thank you. That was great. Thank, Thank you. you so much. It was Thank beautiful. You. It was beautiful. Oh, I was thinking a lot. Thank you. So nice. Thank oh, you're you. welcome. Does anybody have any harp questions or? <laughs> I should be one of us. Mesmerizing watching you play. You're just so eloquent and you're so fluid and it's just it's incredible. You're amazing. Oh, thank you. I really love watching you. Wouldn't be without sound. Just to watch you is just so. It's like so soothing just even watching you. It's beautiful. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Can I ask where where you play and like how? When you're not playing for us, like where do you play? Thank you. <laughs> for the last few weeks, nowhere, but um, it really varies. So I have a chamber music series that I do, um, and that that that's out of Madison. But I, I I play in New York. Sometimes I travel with the harp. If I travel, I usually borrow a harp. Um, Once I spotted but, you without, remember when I spotted you in the New Jersey Philharmonic? I don't remember what concert it was, but uh, you played there several years ago. All of a sudden. Oh, with the yeah, New Jersey Symphony, yeah. So yeah, and I and I play a lot. I do a lot of um, chamber music, a lot of um, um, you know churches and temples and core. I love choral music, and I have a violin and harp duo, and we do a, we do a bit of touring. So. Marinda, uh, when I play guitar, my fingers start hurting. What about when you play? Harp, uh, do you have already very strong calluses or do you think it's Yeah, you do, you finally do get calluses. Uh, mostly the, the lower finger, the left hand, because um, the wire strings. You do notice it, like if you don't play for a, a week or two, you notice. But I think the guitar is more like right on the tip and that seems to be very painful, I think. Um, occasionally you get blisters in the, in the summertime when it's really humid. Uh, how much does your harp weigh? 
the, the hush is a hard boy. Um, it, it's about 70 to 80 pounds. Wow. So I don't really, I mean, I, I lean it when I move it. I try not to lift it directly. Yeah. Um, and when it's leaning back on my shoulder, it's kind of balanced so that it, it's back, but it's, it's balanced and it's not really pressing on my shoulder that much. Well, I must, I must say that uh, also Marinda plays uh, in Morristown Hospital uh, and uh, the patients find it very soothing. As a matter of fact, uh, she volunteered to come with me uh, to some uh, patients. Uh, we, we, we bump into each other in Morristown Hospital. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of them you probably know, um, it was uh, uh, Dr. Najarian. So it was just three days before he unfortunately passed away. And uh, Miranda played for him and uh, hopefully it, he found, um, he heard her, so yeah. Wow, that was very, really, really nice. Yeah, yeah no, I love doing that. I, you know, I, usually, I usually take the small harp with me for that. I, I forgot to mention this, she's not yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. At, usually, I'm usually at Chilton Hospital every Tuesday morning, um, but not obviously um, not not for the last month and a half or so. Miranda, right. I was reading your bio. You certainly have been in a lot of interesting places. Yeah, yeah. I kind of thank thankfully have had reasons to travel with the harp and. Um, uh, she also has master classes, right, all over the world. I'm sorry. She also, do master classes all over the world. Yes, yeah, in France, and then uh, Aprile Milo, the, the, the soprano, we've I've accompanied her, and so she, we've gone to Toronto and London and um, and uh, Carnegie. We've uh, played recitals you, together. That's been fun. How did you learn? Like, what was your training to learn on this? Um, you know, I started, I started the, the violin when I was about four, five, and then I started the piano around six, and then I saw the harp. I saw, they had a harp teacher at my grammar school, and so I said to my mom, can I play the harp? And she's like, you know, you're six and you play two instruments, I think that's enough. And so I kind of, <laughs> beg, I begged for a while, and then my sister said, oh, I'll take harp lessons too, so... We started, you know, I was probably seven-ish, seven, almost eight, and we rented a small harp and um, just st studied privately, and then I studied at Manhattan School of Music, and then in the Netherlands um, for a year. How many wow. harps do you have? Pardon? How many harps do you have? How many harps? Um, I have two that I pr primarily perform on. Um, so the one that I, I just played for you, and then there's one that just has one more string that's usually better for orchestral playing. And then I also do rent harps. So I rent harps to, um, to students. So I have about 10 or 11 rental harps. And then I have a small harp that I use at the hospital. Did you ever try to build your own? You know, I, I kind of get excited about that, but then I, I don't know. I think I should leave that to those who are talented in the woodworking. <laughs> I think it would be like in pieces in the side of my studio and <laughs> I would never finish it. Mm. If you use the small harp, are you limited what you could play? Yes, definitely. Yeah. There, there's definitely more repertoire than there used to be. Like the smaller harps used, used to be kind of a stepping stone. You would start on those and then, oh, I always want to play the bigger harp. But more and more people, and especially adults, are starting to take up the harp and they want to just play that harp and um, so there are a lot more arrangements of popular tunes and folk songs and um, even classical pieces that you wouldn't think you could play on the smaller harp. The, the smaller harps don't have uh, pedals though, do they? No, they don't. They have little levers that you, you would flip up up at the top. Um, and that changes from major to minor? Um, yeah. Is that type of thing? But you can only make it one other pitch. So say you had a C string, on the, the smaller harps, you flip up a lever and it can become C sharp, but those are your only two choices. Oh, okay. Yeah, on the pedal harp, you have three choices, flat, natural, and sharp. Oh, okay. so. Thank you so much. Anybody has, anybody else wanted to ask anything? Thank you again. It's no, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And
Beautiful it's music. Really beautiful. You're welcome. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. 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 Thank you.